Hello folks, this is Sula speaking. You're listening to another video for Teamfight Tactics. In this game, we're going to be looking at a Jade team composition. This game is taken from the most recent B patch that came out to address the problems with <laughs> the most recent main patch. That was the A-Soul patch, is the way I'd like to think of it. A patch where Aurelian Soul received three different absurd buffs, and as literally everyone predicted, Aurelian Soul was overbuffed to the point of being way too strong and dominating the meta in a very unhealthy way. So this B patch had to come out to address that and directly undid many of the buffs that were in the previous patch. So Aurelian Soul still a strong option in this uh, in this new B patch, but no longer is get one star A Soul and you're guaranteed a top four and have really strong odds to win the lobby as soon as you just hit one star version of the unit. So we're going to be looking at a Jade team composition in this game. Jade has emerged as one of the top comps in this particular patch. Really, now that Aesol has been knocked back down to size, this patch has become all about playing Jade and Corky, and they are really the two dominant team comps, and I expect that'll be the case for the rest of this patch. This was played on the first day of that patch, and I was testing some stuff out here in this normal game, and I'm going to be testing out a Jade team composition in this patch. Of course, Jade has been around from the beginning of the set, and it's been a popular team composition throughout. It has kind of gone up and down over time, but uh, in this particular patch, <clears throat> Jade was already in a pretty strong place, and then the ASOL... Uh, Aurelian Soul got knocked down in terms of strength, and that has left Jade in a very strong position. I saw that there was a Karma with a Rod on the initial starting carousel. I thought that that looked like good synergy, so I went ahead and grabbed that unit. And I've been able to make a two-star Karma here. I've also gotten a tier to drop, so this is looking strongly like an Archangel Staff to build on Karma. But we'll have to see what item she, what other items I get here. Always good practice not to commit your items until you see what all of them are coming out of the minion round. So I get a cloak, and that's that's not really going to build into a spellcasting item. Jade team compositions don't want a chalice because they have to position around the jade statue. So this looks like it'll be an Archangel Staff, and then there'll be a cloak left over for a frontliner. And that's kind of the plan there. All right, so I'm going to wait to see what my first augment choice is. I was like, oh, I'll go ahead and take second wind. These other two do not look like they particularly hit my team composition. And then I'm going to hit this set, so I'm going to go ahead and look to play the set as well. This is not going to be enough to put Dragon Vance or Trade in play. Ideally, I would have an Ash, and then I could replace either the Tarek or the Nar with an Ash, and then that would get me 3 Jade, three, jade, three Dragon Vancer, which is a common opening for a Jade board. But I've got the 2-star Karma. I've got a good item on Karma. Archangel Staff is going to be one of her better items. Jade comps generally enjoy stalling out fights over time, and then that synergizes well with the Archangel Staff. So I am pretty well set here for the early game. I don't know if I'm going to win every round, but I think I'll be in pretty good shape. And this looks like a good opener for Jade. So now that we've built the initial part of our comp, now it's time to show our hand and see what we've got in terms of the PvP combat rounds. The Mirage trait in this game is Duelist, and that is seen as being one of the strongest du uh, traits that can roll for Mirage. Uh, this person has already made a two-star Yone and put a, what is it, a Rapid Fire Cannon on him. So this looks pretty strong, and in fact it's overwhelming Karma pretty quickly here. Uh, two-star, two-cost beats a two-star, one-cost, that's not surprising. But I immediately was like, I think that person's the strongest one in the lobby. They had two-star Yone with this really good trait for um, the Mirage trait with Duelist as the trait. And in addition to that, they also had, uh, I think they had four warriors in because they had plus one warrior from their augment. So two star Yone with Duelist and with four warrior, that's gonna be pretty strong in the early game. So I lose to that, but I do think I beat most of these other boards. Then I also get the nice hit of having Ash pop up in the store so I can take out the, take out the Nar and then go ahead and play the uh, three Jade, three Dragon Mancer that I mentioned before. People are talking about Astral Toggling. This would be putting in the uh, Astral 9 units and then using it to roll for better shop odds. This is something that the development team has been trying to fix for some time. Whether they've actually fixed it or not, it does not appear that they have fixed this. 
in the way that they wanted to. So it appears that this is still an issue that's in the game. Although at least they turned down the Astral 9 shop odds from having 75% odds to print an item, which is ridiculous to, I think that when they went down to 45% odds when printing uh, to print an item when rolling with Astral Shops on Astral 9. All right, so I was able to win that second round pretty easily. Again, I'm expecting to win most of these rounds pretty easily overall because I think I have a I think I have a strong board here, and this is really a dream opener for the Jade trait. Like I said, I hit two star Karma right out of the gate. I have hit two star Tarek. I have the two star Set, and Set can actually hold items for Shi Ou, who is the Jade Dragon. So I'm going to have Set just hold any items that are going to go on Shi Ou later. A good item holder for them because. Set deals physical damage, Shiyu deals physical damage, and you generally move out of Dragon Mancer trait later on when you play uh, Jade. Depending on what units you hit, there's some flexibility in a Jade comp like most other comps, but you typically move out of Dragon Mancer later to play uh, Shapeshifter Frontline with Nico plus the Nar, and then also looking to move into like more Mystic and more Evoker that sort of thing. I'm running Karma as the carry for right now, but the plan is at some point I will want to move out of Karma and transfer those items over to Anivia. And this is one of the nice things about playing uh, the team composition that's Jade. You can kind of move from early game units into late game units. Uh, you move the AP items from Karma to Anivia. You can move the tank items from Tarek over to Nico, And then you can move the AD items from whoever's holding them. Like I have Set holding them right now. Uh, they can move them over to she owe you later on. All right, so I am last pick on this carousel because I uh, had a close loss in the first round and have won the other rounds. Out of these options, I'm going to go ahead and take the sword. It's on a three gold champion, a three gold Silas, and then that can make Bloodthirster, which is one of the better items for she owe you later on. So I felt pretty comfortable with that. Didn't feel the need to take tank items. There actually weren't a lot of tank items available either. So we'll just make the Bloodthirster for right now. Again, it, it actually is one of Set's better items. There is still a reroll set build going around where people try to roll for threat set three star, though I don't think that that's very good. There was a time early in the set where that was kind of like a decent build, but uh, I don't think it's particularly good right now. Uh, someone, I believe, is actually going for that in this game. The person, Sonzi Tuba, I believe, is rerolling for three star set, so I'll have to see how well that goes. But the problem is the recent patch changes really nerfed the viability of the one and two cost three stars, uh, particularly if they're AD based, it just kind of murdered how much a AD that they get from scaling up to three stars. And it also nerfed Deathblade, which is an item that uh, scales based on star level. So three star one cost, just not really very viable at the moment. I'm sure you can try to play them. Maybe if the stars align, it'll work out, but I wouldn't recommend it. I also would not recommend playing through the Dragon Mancer trait in this particular patch version. The data just says it's not a strong trait, and based on what I've seen empirically, it definitely seems to match up with that. Just does not feel like going three dragon like going six Dragon Mancer is very viable as a carry option. Alright, so as mentioned, we're just kind of chilling here. I lost to uh, the first round, but if you're gonna lose uh, a round on stage two the kind of the best thing to do is lose the very first stage and then win all of the rest so you can carry a potential four match win streak into the minion round there is one person in the lobby who appears to be afk so i got a free win against them but i continue to look at these other comps and i do think i'm stronger than most of these by the way look at how many people are still playing mages here this is a lobby where a lot of people were playing mages uh, I saw that this person had rolled a Shroud of Stillness. They rolled it out of their Thief's Glove. I was hoping they would not reposition to hit me. This is one of the weaknesses of Jade Comps, is because you have to clump up around the Jade Statues, you are very susceptible to things like Shroud of Stillness, also very susceptible to Corky's Rockets, which is why Jade Comps tend to have a bad matchup into Corky. You know, everybody's clumped up together around the Jade Statues, so Corky fires off his missiles and everybody just gets hit by them. So this is a team that tends to do well against Aurelian Soul, but poorly against Corky, and that's kind of been the, the three-way rock, paper, scissors in this patch version, that uh, Corky beats Jade, Jade beats Aurelian Soul, Aurelian Soul beats Corky. Um, but, it, but really, Aurelian Soul just beat everything <laughs> in the last patch because of how strong Aurelian Soul was. Anyway, though, it was a really good stage two. Uh, I only took two damage. I was able to get on a full win streak. And this one person is really, really talkative, saying that this one person was the ultimate sacker. It, it, that they mean deliberately lost streaking. That's not someone who's deliberately lost streaking. That's someone who's just away from their computer and is just, you know, slowly dying because they have nobody piloting the ship. 
All right, so we've got another creep run here, and again, I can build AD items for a future she OU. Right now, it's probably better to get AP items because I actually have Karma, who is the unit I'm playing through at the moment. And oh, look at this. I actually get the items for a Jeweled Gauntlet, which is one of Karma's better items. So I will happily go ahead and make that. And we'll just put this on Karma and keep right on going here. So now I have a decision to make. Do I want to level to level 6 right now? I can level to 6 and put in, I think I have... Ezreal I could put in, but I, so I'm looking at the other comps, I'm like, do I beat these other comps at level 5, or do I need to, or do I benefit from going to 6? I was looking at these and I was like, I think I, I think I actually beat these other comps right now with what I have, and I don't think that putting in Ezreal really does much of anything. I guess I could also put in Nar for a little bit of extra CC, but I don't think that leveling would really do that much. Like, Swift Shot Trait's not going to do anything notable. And putting in a one-star Nar, I don't think does anything of significance either. So I decide just to hold here. I'm hoping I can win this. And I'm actually up against the person who hasn't lost yet, which is really, really nice. The good news is it looks like my board actually is going to win this round. We're able to focus the Yone relatively early. Tom Kench and Leona will never kill anything. So Karma stays safe in the back, managed to get the kill. And it looks like I'm going to win this. It also looks like this person did not, was uh, away from their computer briefly, because you have the disconnected, reconnected message. They did not pick up or use their items from the minion round. So I get a little bit of a break there, in the sense that I'm able to beat the person who's win streaking while they were away <laughs> for that particular moment. All right, here, Recombopulator, Makeshift Armor. Neither one of these is that good for me. And I don't want to re, I don't want to use my reroll here on a round. That is a silver augment. So I'm going to save my reroll on the augment and just take the item grab bag. And so I'm going to go ahead and get a blue buff. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, blue is not the item that I would have chosen here. Blue buff is not something that I'm kind of build towards with this team composition. But it actually turns out that it's one of Karma's best items. It's really good on Karma and also on Ezreal, as longtime Karma and Ezreal reroller Antisocial Monkey would tell us. It's actually one of Karma's best items, so even though this is not going to be great late game, it's going to be perfectly fine right now to just put this on Karma. I can put it on Anivia later, and you know, like it's not great on Anivia because her mana cost is 80, so going up to uh, putting a blue buff, which means that the mana will go back to... Uh, will go to 20 after each cast. That's not really great. The Spear of Shojin would be better, but eh, I mean, it's a silver augment. To get something that gives me an injection of power right now is really not bad, because this does mean that I should be able to just stay here, not have to roll, and look to ideally win streak up to level 7 and level 8. And I'm just going to try to get to 8 as quickly as possible, and then look to find Shio Yu uh, and Nico and... Uh, Anivia and go from there. So I think that this was pretty good for me overall in the sense that it gives me something that really spikes my board right now and then hopefully allows me to win streak to a point where I can look to find some of the stronger units later on down the road. I'm also going to hit the two-star Leona, so I'm definitely hitting here. Look, I mean, I've two-starred almost everything on my board. Yes, a lot of them are one cost. The Tarek, the Leona, the Set, and the Karma are all one cost units, but still, I mean, they're all two starred, and that means they're going to be pretty strong for now. It also means they're going to fall off a cliff later on in the game, unless I can upgrade into more expensive and better units. But, uh, you know, that's for that's something for down the road. For right now, we're win streaking and in a really comfortable position. I even go ahead and find a Sona, so I'll just stuff that in there. I think that Sona, even with no synergies in, is still going to be a better choice than anything else I can look to run in the comp right now. Like, I guess I could put in the, like, I could put in Nar for a little bit more frontline. I could take that random Vola Bear in the shop and play that for another tiny bit of Dragon Mancer value, but I don't think that any of that would be better than just Sona having the additional crowd control. So this is a quirky, this is a person who's building into quirky. They don't have a quirky yet, but you can see how difficult it is for my comp to get past that Idis frontline. That Idis just kind of stands there and tanks and tanks and tanks and tanks, and that is one of the weaknesses of this setup. Fortunately, Karma is strong enough that she's able to just let that Archangel staff stack up and get a whole bunch of additional ability power. But um, that comp is going to be trouble down the road. And again, this is one of the problems for Jade compositions is they don't have a lot of backline access, and they struggle against the grouped damage that Quirky boards can come up with. So like, if that person had had a Quirky, if that person had really had any damage instead of just a super tanky Idis, then I would have been in a lot of trouble and I would have lost that round. So in any case, now I'm definitely looking for more frontline stuff. And I'd really like this, uh, I really would have liked that chain vest, but it was moving away from me. So now I'm just looking for frontline stuff. Again, I would have liked the, uh, would have liked the, uh, 
uh, vest there because that could potentially be a Titan's Resolve, which is one of the best items on Shi'ou. Generally, people for Shi'ou like to build Bloodthirster plus Titan's Resolve plus Rage Blade plus Quicksilver Sash plus Edge of Night. Some combination of those items tends to be pretty good on her. Uh, all of them being pretty good. So, I mean, it's like standard stuff that you would build for melee carries. Melee carries always like having uh, Bloodthirster for sustainability, Titans so that they can stack up the armor and magic resistance, etc. So, you know, standard stuff for melee carry. Um, but I was not able to get that, so I have instead this belt, which is going to be, uh, which is going to be fine. Uh, you see, as I knock the away from computer player out of the lobby, um, it can be used for could be used for Warmogs, could be used for Sunfire, uh, could, could be used for Morellos, I guess. Although Morellos did finally get nerfed in this uh, patch version. But whatever, I'll find some use for this. I do need frontline items to go on Nico down the road as well. Alright, so everybody else in the lobby is not on a win streak, whereas I am. So I'm feeling pretty good about my situation in the game right now. I'm just kind of smoothly econing here. I can spend 12 gold to level here. And I really should level if I'm at all concerned about losing. I'm going to look at these other boards here. Someone has indeed found Quirky. Uh, by the way, I can also hit four different team compositions because someone got knocked out of the lobby right now. Uh, also, that person has made the three-star set. So we're going to get a good indication of how strong is three-star set. You can see them talking in the, in the lobby right now. I'm pretty sure that I lose to that set player if I hit them. So I would basically just wanted to cross my fingers and hope I don't hit them. And it turns out I actually don't. I actually hit someone who is, I guess, playing into Aurelian Soul with mages. But their board looks very weak right now. They have, like, no front line at all. And they don't really have a carry either. Or maybe they're trying to play Varus. But Varus has no items. I don't know. This person's board does not look very strong at all. Uh, it's a whole bunch of one-cost units without much in the way of front line. So, uh, yeah, not having too much trouble making it through this particular team composition. I guess they did a little bit of damage, but it's not especially close. And this is great news for me, because it means that my win streak runs out to nine rounds. So I won lost the first round of the game and have won every round since then. All right, I'll go ahead and pick up the Anivia. I don't see any great need to play Anivia right now. Oh, I guess I can put her in the team comp, and then that will give... Uh, that would give me a rank of Evoker, or I could just play the Lulu together with the uh, Sona. And I think I decide that an Anivia with no items is not actually very useful at all. So I'll just play the Lulu plus Sona for the time being for Evoker trait. And then they'll go ahead and give me some, uh, a little bit, basically some more crowd control, some CC. All right, so here I'm going to go ahead and get, what is it? I get a tier and I get a, uh, a chain vest. And then, oh, here's a big hit. I'm going to find a Soraka in here. I was like, oh... Okay, well, I gotta play the Soraka. It's not gonna make any other traits. It just puts me to four Jade. But Soraka being a legendary unit is gonna be fantastic. So she will go ahead and heal my board. And she will 100% be in whatever team composition I'm going to be playing here. This actually opens up the possibility of playing nine Jade, which uh, is typically something that's a little hard to do unless you manage to get a Jade, uh, like plus one Jade from an Augment or an Emblem. Normally it's hard to play. Uh, nine Jade because you need to find Soraka typically, but uh, you know, I found the Soraka. I found the Soraka at 1% odds and I actually have the possibility of getting some use out of offensive Soraka in this game. So, uh, and, the, and the, what that means is if you, you know, Soraka's ability, her unique ability, Star Caller, it heals your little legend as a one-star unit. She will heal your little legend for 2 HP. I started this round with 98 HP because I lost the first round of the game. By the way, I've hit this person, J JPEGs, uh, on 2-1 and 3-1 and 4-1. So I took two damage on the first round of the game. I have not lost a round since then. She healed my little legend for 2 HP. So she healed me up to 100 health. By the way, I'm going to reroll this augment. And I don't really like anything that much, but I'll just take Cybernetics. It's always a solid choice. I also have the option to go into Alshin, but not really configured for Alshin. So I'm not going to look to do that. Um, so in addition, I actually might have played Aurelian Soul if I had hit it here, because they do have good, very, very good items for Aurelian Soul. Um, so she's going to heal my little legend, but since I'm already at 100 HP, what does her ability do? And this is something that the designers came up with, is if Soraka, if your little legend is 100 HP, Soraka's ability, instead of healing you for X amount of HP, she deletes two units off the enemy board. So now that I have 100 health, as long as I'm at 100 health, Soraka will delete two enemy units off the board when she casts her ability for the first time. And that's done as true damage, and it just instantly kills some of the units. So I'm up against a Corky board here. 
The good news is this is a ghost round, so note that the, the bugs in the ghost round, Namzi is sitting there with like 200 HP because Namzi does not have the health that Namzi would normally have. And now Soraka is about to cast, and you're going to see she's just going to kill two units in the back lines. It was hard to see, but two units that were on the left-hand side, I think it was their Heimer and one of their other units, they just instantly die when Soraka casts, and so she does like a billion true damage. And fortunately, with this being a ghost round and Soraka taking units off the board, we're going to end up winning this. Yeah, Soraka does like 2,000 true damage via her ability. <clears throat> so the fact that I have the Soraka in there actually is pretty interesting. Soraka is now like one of my carry units, but that only functions as long as I'm at 100 HP. So yeah, uh, <laughs> that's kind of interesting. Um, and now I'm going to roll and I'm going to get the she owe you in. And now I'm actually at eight Jade. So I was like, Oh, you know what? Uh, we, we should just put another unit in for nine Jade. And I can definitely do that. If I want to, all I have to do is take out the Leona and there we go. Nine Jade. Now I don't have any other traits in. So this is, it's basically just nine Jade, but nine Jade gives you an awful lot of attack speed and an awful lot of, um, healing, uh, health regen. And like I said, I kind of have a bit of a stall comp here, so I do think that the 9 Jade is the best board that I can play for the moment. 9 Jade generally does not... Oh, and I also have Second Wind as well, so I have a... And I have Soraka, so I have a tremendous amount of healing in my comp. Unless somebody has a heal cut on their team, they're not going to do very well against my board. Now, this is something that can get outscaled in time. Again, the fact that I'm literally just playing uh, 9 Jade and nothing else is not ideal for the long run. But that said, it's going to be awfully strong for right now. As, and as long as I can keep my HP at 100, Soraka is going to keep deleting two enemy units off the board every round. It is random which one she takes out. So it's a little bit like Phantom Trait from set one uh, <laughs> in terms of who actually gets hit over here. So out of these, I actually don't like the options that are here. Again, I really would like to build some items for Shi Oyu. Shi Oyu is the unit I most want to itemize at the moment, but there's not really anything that I want. I could have taken Hand of Justice, but like I already have the Bloodthirster, so that's kind of a lower priority. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and roll here. I'm looking to try and hit some stuff. And then I hit the Nico, so we'll definitely play the Nico over the Tarek, and I can easily just move this Sunfire Cape over to the Nico. And uh, what is it? Now I'm just going to go ahead and roll and see what else I can find. Like, there's a Sona, but I don't see why I play that. By the way, a lot of uh, a lot of Al Shins on this board right now. I hit two-star Nivea, and I was like, oh, you know what? Uh, we should transfer the items over, because note that I no longer have Dragon Mancer trait in play. Since I'm no longer uh, running Dragon Mancer trait, it's better to put these items on Nivea, who is, you know, a three-cost unit instead of a one-cost unit. Um, so I'll, I'm happy to transfer these items. And these are good items for Anivia. The only thing that's kind of questionable is the blue buff. As I said, Anivia has 80 mana, as Soraka does 4,000 true damage. <laughs> Uh, the only thing that's wonky is the blue buff, but I got that for free, and I've gotten good use out of it. Well, not for free. I used an augment for it, but got it at the price of a silver augment. And, like, it's not terrible. It's, like, a, you know, on, like, a scale of 1 to 10, it's, like, maybe, like, a 6 or a 7 as far as items she can use. Also, have a little chat here. Someone typed in the chat, think Jade's about to become broken. And I was like, Jade looks really strong. But, and I said, this is a stupid high roll game for me, which it is because I hit the Anivia so easily. I hit the early game Karma so easily. And uh, now that I have the three Jade statues, I can reposition a little bit. Uh, one nice thing about Jade 9 is you actually can uh, avoid being clumped up to some extent. And it's better not to have everyone right next to each other uh, for these battles. Better not to be right on top of each other. So I'm going to spread out a little bit. Everybody is still next to a Jade statue for the healing and also for... Uh, the attack speed benefit, and uh, I'm going to wait until after the Treasure Dragon, and then I'm going to look to try to roll and hit uh, I'll hit a few more units in particular. If I could hit Shi OU 2 star, I do have 2 out of 3, and if I can do that, then I'd be content to look to try to go up to level 9. This is the person, wow, this I've hit this person's board an awful lot of times. Uh, that's the person I've hit, on uh, the person who's playing the uh, Mirage Cavaliers, and uh, has now made the 3-star Yone. But uh, does not appear to be in that strong of a position. I feel bad for this person because I hit them 2-1, 3-1, 4-1, and 4-6. Again, the lobby is kind of weird because we had that person who was AFK and another person has died as well. So we have a lot of people who have gone out of the lobby fairly early. All right, I go ahead and take this. And this may be a mistake as well. I think I could have maybe been a little bit more selective here in terms of what items I picked up. So I go ahead and make my uh, tank items right here. So I'm going to make Dragon's Claw, and then I'm going to make Wormogs. And then I go ahead and make Static Shiv. But I think maybe I could have been a little bit more picky here. I generally like to take... 
I generally don't like to roll reroll too much for items. I'm like this is not bad. Now I have a fully itemized Nico, which is really good. Um, but I didn't quite get Shiyu itemized, and Shiyu is probably the most important unit in this team composition because Shiyu is kind of intended to carry me through these late game fights. Uh, Bloodthirst are a good item. Static Shift not such a good item, honestly. And um, the other thing in retrospect that maybe I could have done is I could have looked potentially to put the Dragon's Claw on Shiyu and just have two items on Nico, two items on Shiyu instead. But I was thinking I could probably get another good item for Shiyu off of one of these carousels. So that's my hope. Something that's tanky plus AD. So as I said, I would really like to get uh, Titans would be great, Rage Blade would be great, Quicksilver Sash, Edge of Night. Like there's a lot of possibilities they could get there. And other stuff that maybe wouldn't be amazing but would still be decent. Um, so anyway, that's my hope is to get another item for this unit. Uh, as of right now, I'm still kind of punching right through these team compositions. And then this person quits the lobby, too. I don't think that they were about to die in that lobby. I believe they still had some health left, but they just go ahead and leave the lobby. So I was like, all right, it's it's a normal game. People do some weird stuff sometimes. But, uh, <laughs> it, but yeah, anyway, it's, uh, it's one of those things. And I've got an extra Anivia here, so I was like, all right, I don't think I'm going to hit Anivia 3-star, but it is a possibility. It doesn't... It, it really costs... Only three gold to hold this unit, so it's like, whatever, I've got plenty of money. Now, here is the bad news. There's a lot of people playing Corky in this lobby, and as I mentioned, Corky is a bad matchup for this board. Uh, Corky just is kind of the counter to Jade team compositions, so I'm worried about uh, <laughs> worried about running into some of those players. In the meantime, though, I've actually got the set reroll player. So remember, this is the person who made set three star. They're actually quite, quite talkative, quite chatty in the lobby earlier on. But, uh, well, how does the set three star fare? Well, it turns out actually not very good. Not very good at all, unfortunately. So well, I'm just going to go ahead. Shiyu gets the CC on set, and then the rest of the team is going to win. And then this person quits the lobby too. Although they actually did hit zero HP. So I've actually knocked three of the four players out of this game that have left the lobby. Yeah, I've knocked out three different players thus far. Although one of them was away from their computer, was an AFK player. So uh, <laughs> anyway, we're just going to keep econing up to level nine and then we'll figure out what to play. One option certainly is to play Lulu. Lulu would give me Mystic and Evoker trait. And then the question is like, can I make something better than that? But Lulu certainly does not look bad. The other big option is if I can find Yasuo. Yasuo is another option because Yasuo puts Dragon Mancer back in play. Would give me Dragon Mancer 3. So that also is an option as well. And uh, would give me a third carry. So like right now, the main the carries are Shiyu and Anivia. And then I could also, if I can get Yasuo in, that would give me another unit to play through as well. I uh, have to keep mentioning, Soraka continues to delete two units in every single one of these fights, which is a really big deal. Unfortunately, in this fight, she deletes two units that were not two of the more important ones. She did not hit the Deja, she did not hit the Yone, she did not hit the uh, Braum. So this time, the fight RNG goes against me, and yeah, I'm sorry if you thought this was going to be a game where I win on 100 HP. It is not. It is not. I'm not able to just go through and win with 100 HP. And I was actually kind of relying on Soraka for a lot of my offense there, unfortunately. So, yeah, that does not end up uh, turning out the way that I would have liked. So we've got another carousel here. There's quite a few options on this carousel. Unfortunately, nothing that I really want that badly. I might have taken the Dragon's Claw, but that's not there. And, like, out of these other options, there's very little I can use. Maybe the Morellos, but I do have a Sunfire Cape, so like, who would even use the Morellos? So I just decide I'll take Soraka 2-star. I'm aware that the Ragewing Emblem is useless for her, but I really couldn't find anything that I particularly wanted on that carousel, which is a bit unfortunate. I mean, I maybe I could have taken the Legend Emblem and then looked to toss in Volibear or Orn to play 3 Legend, but I don't know. That would have been, uh, <laughs> that would have been a little bit tricky to do. I'm not really set up to play that. This quirky player also has five rebel, which is looking pretty scary. So I'm going to do a repositioning now that now that there's four of us in the lobby, you know who you're going to hit every single round. So look at this repositioning I'm going to do. I'm going to shift Shiyu over to the right hand side. I want the Shiyu not to get stuck on that orn. So look what happens. I go over to the right hand side. Shiyu cuts through the. Uh, cuts through the Namzi, and look, Shuyu is on the back line, punching Corky, exactly what I want to see. So this is a fight that I'm pretty much going to win just based off of that repositioning. If Shuyu gets stuck on the Orn, I 100% lose. That Orn is super tanky. But instead, Shuyu manages the path into the back line, and she just like one at a time kills every single backliner on the enemy team. And so we're going to be able to win this round. I was very pleased with that because that board does look quite strong. 
uh, running Revel 5, and my comp is not especially well set up to deal with them. So again, just going to keep econing up here to level 9. Uh, if I were to do this game over again, I think I would be picking up all of the Lulus as well, because if I'm roll it, like if I want to, I can roll for more Anivias and roll for more Lulus, because they're both 3-cost units. If I'm taking both of them out of the pool, then it actually helps my odds of hitting 3-star versions of both, and I do think that that would be pretty good, but we'll see. The other option, again, is to drop out of Jade 9, to drop down to a lower tier of Jade, and then uh, play just like play 6 Jade, but play better units, and that also would be a good option. And I really should also look to pick up units along those lines. Like I could drop the I could drop the uh, Ash and I could drop the Karma, who are basically useless in this comp. And I could look to play like I could play instead uh, Lulu plus Bard plus Sona, and like that would be you know would probably be pretty nice. Now it's going to be hard to hit Sona because two people playing Corky in this lobby. And by the way, you see what happens against a Corky board where I can't get through the front line. Yeah, I get shredded pretty good by that player. So I was like, ooh, that that does not look so great. Uh, <laughs> but like that's another possibility if I can get manage to get uh, some of these better units here. So I was also thinking about that as well. But uh, we'll have to see what makes the most sense. As far as positioning Shi'o this is what's pretty typical for Shi'o Yu, is you want Nico to tank the initial aggression from the enemy team. So put Shi'o Yu a little bit behind Nico. Uh, so that Nika will transform into Shio Yu, uh, and then Shio Yu can hopefully not get stuck on tanks to the same extent, or at least that's the hope. This is an item I do not want. This is a redemption. This is a bad fit. This is not an item that I can use very well. By the way, I get another Soraka, but I already have Soraka 2-star, so now taking that unit off Carousel kind of useless. But I do get a Yasuo, so that's something. So I can go ahead and look to play through that. I already have two-star versions of most of these units. I'm going to get up to seven Anivias. I was like, oh, okay. Well, now this is looking more like a realistic possibility. I already have three-star versions of these, or two-star versions of these units. So again, looking here, and it's like, do I play the Lulu? And there's eight Anivias. It's like, do I play the Lulu or do I play the Yasuo? I think the Yasuo is better here. But again, I, I don't think, I do think that maybe it would be better just to drop Ash Karma, put in Lulu anyway, because that would give a Voker trait for Anivia, which is one of my better units. Like, drop Ash, drop Karma. I, by the way, I didn't even put the Dragon Mancer Blessing on Yasuo for this round, so that's something I'm going to have to fix. Um, Yasuo definitely does help, though, because Yasuo gives me another threat in my comp. Um, definitely does help. So Yasuo is doing Yasuo stuff. We're trying to kill this Braum. Fortunately, Anivia is able to kill the Deja. By the way, here's this same player yet again. Remember how I hit this player the first round of like literally every stage? 2-1, 3-1, 4-1, 6-1. -1. I guess I didn't hit them on 5-1, but still. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to hit that player. By the way, if I picked up these Nars, I'd probably be close to Nar 3-star as well, which would have been worthwhile to get. And like, there's Bard. So I do think that the proper play here, as you see me sell Bard, which I think is a mistake, uh, I think the proper play here is, like, yes, just ignore dra ignore Dragon Mancer, drop down to 6 Jade, play the Bard, and play the Lulu in this situation. I think that's the correct play, because that would get me up to 3 Mystic, which would be really good against these teams that are running heavy uh, Revel trait. Like, this person's Revel, this person's running uh, Revel Cannoneer, but most of their damage is magic. Like, look at Corky. Even Corky is not doing that much physical damage. He has a Death Blade, I guess, but like he's not itemized for physical damage. He's itemized for AP. So having Mystic 3 in here would actually make a giant difference. I actually don't have Mystic in at all, which is a little bit weird. So anyway, I think that that would have been a better decision in retrospect. As you see me kind of getting shredded by this comp right here. So yeah, you, I, I pointed out that this is a bad matchup. As Sona does 13,000 damage. It is just kind of a bad matchup for, um, for this board. So... That's what I would do if I were to do this game over again, would uh, be to drop the drop down to 6 Jade, but then play Bard and uh, Lulu. Alright, and by the way, look at what this person's going to do here. They've actually managed to hit 2-star Aurelian Soul, and they're actually going to drop the Sona and play Aurelian Soul instead, which is really interesting. So now they've taken all their Sona items and put them on Aurelian Soul, and it's like, oh, okay. Well, now we're going to have a test of like how strong is Aurelian Soul in this new patch after the uh, nerfs went through. So we're not going to see that this round because this round is up against the, uh, the my, my friend here that I keep hitting over and over again in this game. So I'm actually going to watch the other round because I'm more. I'm, I'm very confident I beat this other board. I want to see what happens 
in this matchup between the person who's now put in Aurelian Soul and then that Mirage plus Deja player. And it looks like Aurelian Soul is winning this pretty easily. So, yep, they're going to knock out that other player. And meanwhile, I win my round. And it's going to be down to me against uh, the person who's now playing Aurelian Soul. All right, so out of these particular options here, uh, there is... Oh, there's a Titans here. How did I not see that? Well, I guess they didn't have a choice because they already grabbed the Titans anyway. I would have liked the Titans to put on... Um, to put on Shiyu, but there's also a blue here, which is one of Yasuo's best items, so I grabbed that. And that will also give Yasuo an item for cybernetics value. So I, I have gotten good value out of cybernetics in this game. Right now I'm still rolling to try to hit this one more Anivia. I am on eight Anivias, so I would love to hit that. And I did manage to put the Dragon Mancer's Blessing on Yasuo. So let's go ahead and see this now, right? Uh, this person's got the Aurelian Soul in with very, very good Aurelian Soul items. I am running the Nine Jade, but I don't have Mystic trade in, and I do think that that's a problem. Uh, no Mystic against this setup is, is pretty sad, especially because I have the possibility to play three Mystic very easily here. So let's see how this goes. I'm relying on uh, Shiyu to punch through the back line, but like, Shiyu does not have as much tankiness as I would ideally like to have on Shiyu. I don't have any, like I said, I don't have a Titan, so I don't have a Quicksilver Sash. So how successful am I right now at punching through the front lines? Uh... Not very successful. <laughs> Not very successful, as it turns out. So I was like, ooh. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, uh, can I get my gold back to put in Bard and Lulu? Because I've, I've sold the two-star Lulu with the expectation that I'm not going to play Lulu. And uh, I don't have any Bards because I sold the two Bards that I found in stars. So at this point, I was like, oh... I really wish I could uh, undo those decisions I made and drop out of 9 Jade, but I don't think I can do that right now. So I'm just trying to like reposition here. I was like, uh, is there any way that I can like manage to win a round here? But I actually get a break for no clear reason. This person has taken out Aurelian Soul. I don't know what they're doing. I have no clue what they're what what they're thinking here. Why they would take Aurelian Soul out? Did they want to like challenge themselves? I really don't know. But I was like, all right, okay. If you don't want to run your two-star dragon that's holding all your carry items, all right. Maybe they were just fiddling with their board and ran out of time or something, but I don't know. In any case, I'm going to win that round and do 20 damage, so all right. Thank you very much. And this is going to get me to the to uh, stage 7, where we'll have a chance to roll a little bit more and try to hit three-star Anivia. They have put the, out, the Aurelian Soul back in, so I have to believe that was intentional, that they were just doing something, but I don't know what that might have been. So, a very puzzling decision, to say the least. Unfortunately, this is a game where these last couple, um, like, items I've gotten from the minion rounds and from the carousels have not really been that helpful. Like, the Redemption did not really do anything for my board, and this Gunblade is not going to do anything for my board. So, I was like, uh, I guess this goes on Shiyu, I I guess? I don't really know what to do with it. By the way, I've seen so many Alshins this game. Pretty funny. I'm like, come on, Anivia? Can we get one more Anivia? There's a Bard. Can we find one more Anivia? I'm like, ah, eh, I think it's too late to try to go into Bard. But hey, we are going to get three-star Anivia. Now, it would be nice if I had a Voker trait in for her, so she actually generated more mana. That would certainly be nice. But uh, this means Anivia is going to be a carry in her own right. And I, like I said, I guess I'll put that Gunblade on Shiyu. So this is like one of the worst itemized Shiyu's you'll ever see. But uh, I mean, this is kind of like my board, right? This is kind of like my comp. It's a little late to go changing it into too many directions now. So we just got to hope that we can punch through the front lines. Yasuo's doing a good job of getting on top of the Aurelian Soul. It's like, all right, can we manage to kill this Aurelian Soul? Aurelian Soul now takes longer to ascend takes 18 seconds instead of 15 seconds. And you do see the difference there. It's one additional cast before Aurelian Soul's hitting the whole board. Come on and ah, uh, almost, almost. We were, we were close there. We were close as Aurelian Soul does 20,000 damage. But uh, I could definitely see the, the difference of the nerfs right there. It just takes that extra three seconds to ascend means it's usually one additional cast before Aurelian Soul ascends. And the damage is a little bit lower. I think they knocked the damage on uh, two-star Aurelian Soul from... 700 to like 625 or something like that so they lowered it by a little bit uh and here i'm just kind of fiddling with the positioning i would like yasuo and shiyu to kind of punch through on the sides and that's what i'm hoping that i'll be able to get here but really it's just down to rng it's like can my units manage to get into those back lanes will nivia target useful stuff instead of hitting tanks that sort of thing a lot of this is just randomness 
But uh, we're getting to the front line a little bit faster this time around. Again, just need to get on to Al Shin. Al Shin's position in the middle of the board. We've kind of been hitting everything else. Fortunately, that Al Shin uh, casting does not target Anivia. And, oh, it's down to just the Al Shin. Al Shin's about to cast and wait the board. But, oh, we got him. We got him, Captain. So... We're going to win this, and uh, definitely did feel the fact that Aurelian Soul was weaker. Uh, like I said, the, the fact that they delayed his ascension by those three seconds really was the difference between Aurelian Soul wiping the board in those last fights and me having just enough time to get on top of the jade, the uh, Astral Dragon and kill him. So there you go, a Jade game. Jade, super popular in this patch. It's going to be really strong, so something you should be looking to play. In any case, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed this. Till next time, folks.